Gospel of April the 16, 2014, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to one, to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is quite terrible to see in the innermost circle of the Lord, of the friends of the Lord, of his disciples, his apostles, the one who is betraying him. It hurts so much to think that one of your loved ones is the one that has to betray you. We see how when all the twelve are told that one of them is going to betray the Lord, all of them are very sad, deeply distressed. And it's interesting the question that they ask him, surely it is not I, Lord. Yet the last one does not say that. He said, surely it is not I, Rabbi. There is a huge difference between Lord and Rabbi. For Judah, Rabbi meant only teacher. For the other eleven, Lord meant what they believed him to be. In Caesarea Philippe, where Jesus Christ asked them, Who do the people say that I am? And they started saying a prophet, a liar, or and then the Lord says, Who do you say I am? And Peter says, You are the Son of the Living God. From that point on, all of them started believing somewhat that Jesus was the Kyrios, the Kyrie, the Lord. But one of them rejected him. And that one was the one that treated that gave him up, that made a treason to him, the traitor, the traitor Judas Iscariot, so much so that he could not say Lord, but rather Rabbi. I would like to contrast three apostles today, Judah, Iscariot, Peter and John. Those three were among the twelve that heard that one of them was going to, tray, to betray the Lord. Those three. Peter and John, deeply distressed, asked, Surely it is not I, Lord. Yet the other did not say that. Now, Peter was a middle-aged man. A fisherman who grew up in hardship and knew who he was and he offered the Lord he told the Lord I'm going to give up my life for you 
He meant to do that. He knew what he, what he was saying. But he did not take into account the great fear that he was going to feel. For to overcome those, those things that are above ourselves, we need the power of God. And he perhaps was a little bit too prideful. The Lord tells him, before the crowd sings, you will deny me three times. And he did. Yet Peter cried bitterly as he realized that he did not have the courage or the power to do what he meant to do. John simply didn't say anything. It is very nice in his own gospel how he tell, he asks the Lord, Who is this? Who is it, Lord? And I would like to dare to say that in his heart he knew. I don't know if John in his heart was distressed of his own person, but I believe that he knew that he loved the Lord so much that he could not betray him. And he was the only one of the twelve capable of standing before the cross of the Lord along with the Virgin Mary. For love surpassed so much fear and greed and everything else that he really took the best place to be in. And then we have Judah, Iscariot, the one who rejected the master, who rejected his rabbi, his teacher, the one who rejected the Lord, even though he had been witness to many miracles and being granted even power to expel demons on the name of Jesus. He wanted to be secure by the money. He wanted to have the power of the arms. And he rejected him. The Lord says clearly, Woe to that man! It would be better for him if he had never been born. Peter denies three times the Lord, and yet cries bitterly, but does not go away. He remains, and he will be forgiven afterwards. When he is asked thrice by the Lord, Do you love me, Peter? Do you love me more than this? Do you love me, Peter? Do you love me? But even though Judas, Judah Iscariot reverted his decision, felt remorse, and gave back the money, still I think that he committed the sin against the this Holy Spirit, for he did not believe in the mercy of God, and he would rather take his own life, hanging himself. No one in the church, nor I, would give a decision whether Judah did go to hell or not, that is, in the mercy and the judgment of God. But the words of the Gospel are clear. Are clear. Woe to that man! It would have been better for him if he was never born. Yet he was so close to Jesus. How many of us who might even be working at church, at the church, might be doing exactly like Judah, like the ice carrot? Because we are more willing to make money, to have pleasures, to have power, to go for our pridefulness. Let us pray, pray humbly to the Lord that He might grant us His love, that His burning love might become a fire that burns everything that is bad inside us, that we might be true, at least to the point of Peter, and better yet, in love totally like John. God bless you all, brothers.